What's up guys? Welcome back to the Classic Car Maintenance Channel. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the Hako FX Triple Eight D, which is the newer digital version of the previous FX Triple Eight soldering station. Let's take a look inside. So we can immediately see the two extra soldering iron tips that I ordered separately. You can order a lot of different shapes and sizes, but for now, I just went with a medium sized hoof shape and a fine tip. As you can see, written on the packaging, these are from the new T18 series, which means that they have even better thermal recovery, faster heating, and less temperature drop, which makes them overall a lot more efficient to work with. Then we have some extra information, documents, and a couple of user manuals in different languages. But let's put that to the side. The next item is the soldering iron itself. Let's test it to see how it feels. I'm trying it just now. Feels pretty good. Nicely balanced and good grip. Yeah, not too bad. It comes with a standard conical tip, also from the T18 series. And when we look at the backside, there's a nice, sturdy protection for the wire to prevent excessive bending and tearing the cable. The cable itself is four feet long, which is nice. So you can put the soldering station wherever you want even in the corner of your workbench and still easily reach everywhere you need to be. The cable is made from some sort of soft silicone and is heat protected so when you accidentally touch it with your soldering iron, it doesn't immediately melt away. And it plugs into the soldering station with these six pins. Then when we dig a bit further, we can find both the cleaning sponge and the cleaning wire. They're supposed to go into the soldering iron stand once again making it nice and compact to reduce the soldering station footprint. The soldering iron holder is rocking the classic Hako look and color scheme. This cutout is for the sponge, and in here goes the cleaning wire, but we'll first look what else is in the box. And finally, we have the soldering station itself, the super recognizable Hako with the digital display. It is also featuring the iconic Hako colors and design, although this one is a bit rounder. You either love it or hate it. Personally, I must say that I really like the bright colors, although I prefer the more square look of the professional types. When we look at the back, it's got a long power cable that comes with the right plug and voltage for your region and is fixed to the back. Feels pretty solid. And when we turn it around back to the front, we can see the socket to plug in your soldering iron. The controls are kept super simple with only two buttons. And they feel nice. Give a nice clicky feedback. Simple, but it works. And finally, to the side, there's the on and off switch. That's it, nothing more to it. Okay, now let's take a look at the soldering iron stand. We can see the soldering iron nicely tucked away in there, preventing you from accidentally touching the hot tip or damaging your workstation. The stand itself, as you can hear, is metal, which is also very nice, so there's no plastic that can melt. Let's put this to the side first. So, like shown in the beginning, you have the holder for the sponge and behind it for the metal wire. It's hollow on the inside and serves as a sort of trash can for the solder that falls off your soldering iron. You can open it by pressing the top of the tab, making it easy to remove the solder. You can even take out the bottom metal tray to facilitate cleaning. And to close it back up again, just slide it in there until it locks into place with a click. You just squish the ball of metal wire in there and lay the sponge in here. This way you can dab the soldering iron in there or wipe it off on the sponge, whichever you prefer. Looks very nice. It even has these little rubber feet for grip so you don't push it around when cleaning your soldering iron. Let's put this to the side and go through the controls and settings of the Hako FX Triple Eight D. Now, if you're not used to this system of adjusting the settings, it's pretty confusing and not intuitive. You really need an instructions manual for this. That's the downside of having lots of customizable settings and only a simple display with two buttons. But once it's all set up and you know what to do, it works like a charm. To access the settings, you need to hold the up button and switch it on. You see setting 01 displayed, which is the temperature unit setting. When you select it by pressing enter, it says C for Celsius, and you can change it to Fahrenheit by pressing up. Then just press enter to confirm, and then you go back to the menu. Then when you press up, you go to setting 03, which is the safety temperature setting. When you enter it, you see the temperature displayed below which it will give an error that something is wrong with the temperature. 
If you want to change it, just press up at the number that is flashing and enter to confirm. We'll leave it at 270. Back in the menu, press up to go to set in 11, which is the temperature setting mode which displays zero for the manual temperature select where you have to change the degrees by hand every time. And you can press up to select the preset mode. When you enter it, you get the choice between two, three, four, or five presets between which you can toggle change temperature, but we'll set it at three for the moment. Then press enter to confirm and go back to the menu. The final setting, 14, is the password lock mode. When you enter, you have the choice between option 0, option 1, or option 2. 0 means that there's no password. 1 means a partial lock, and when you enter it, you'll go through three password locations. First, you'll see 1-1 one, one displayed. The first one means the first location, which is the temperature settings, and the second number means that the password is on or off. When you confirm your choice, you go to the second location, the preset selection mode. Again, either one or zero, let's just leave it at zero. And the final location is for entering the adjustment mode. Again, with the option to turn it on or off. Now, after you've selected the locations for the password, you need to enter the password, of course. It consists of three letters, and you can just go through them and select the password you want. We'll go with ABC for now. When you confirm, it saves the partial lock settings in the password, and you go back to the main menu. If you want a full lock, you go back to set in 14 and select option 2, which is the full lock mode, and then you can enter a password again. But now, it will be applied to every location, and not just a customized selection. You'll see some password examples later in the video when adjusting the temperature. After you've changed all the settings you want, just hold enter for two seconds and you see a Y displayed for yes or AN, for no to go back to the temperature display and continue soldering. As you can see, you go back to the temperature but because the soldering iron is not connected, it displays the sensor error, which means something is wrong with your tip, or in this case, not plugged in. Okay. I think that's it for the settings. Let's grab our soldering iron and plug it into the soldering station. It plugs in with these six pins and can only go in with a little notch on top. Carefully slide it in making sure you don't bend the pins. Once it's in it feels pretty sturdy. It doesn't seem like it will be able to work itself loose anytime soon. First, we're going to put the soldering iron safely in its stand before we turn the device on and it starts heating up. Let's turn it on. Just flip the switch and it will display the temperature that is set and will start to heat up towards that temperature. Let's see how long it takes to get to the desired temperature. We're showing you this in real time so you can see how fast it heats up. You can see we didn't need a password to turn it on. That's because the password isn't meant as a child lock, but rather as a safety measure so you or a colleague don't accidentally change the temperature you should use for the job. I guess it's a plus for professional settings but not so much for DIY. Heats up pretty fast, huh? Now that it's hot, let's first send the tip. Make sure you always have solder on your tip to prevent dry burning and oxidation of your tip. It's not just a good practice, it really does significantly improve your tip's lifespan. And while we're at it, let's try the metal wire and sponge to clean the tip. Works pretty well. I like the combination so you can choose depending on how much solder is sticking to your tip. Yeah, I like the solder and iron stand already. For the temperature settings, you need to press enter for one second. Because we activated the password lock, we have to enter our password now to be able to change the temperature. Now you can change the number that is blinking to achieve the desired temperature. You can only toggle upwards with the up button, so you need to keep pressing it until you get the right number. Let's set it to 600 degrees. It works great when you get used to it, but it's still a pity that there's no down button. When you've selected the last number, it will go back to the temperature display and you will see the temperature drop into 600 degrees. Okay, before we go further, I need to warn you about the most common mistake people make with this Hakko. When you want to change the temperature, do not hold the up button. Because when you hold the up button, although it says adjust is to calibrate the temperature. So if you go in here and change everything around, you will change the calibration which you can only fix with a soldering iron thermometer to calibrate it correctly, or with a factory reset, which I'll show you later in this video. 
So don't believe the word adjust that is displayed and it's best to never mess around with the settings without having read the instructions manual. To change the temperature correctly, you need to hold the enter button and then you can change the temperature. Let's say you want it to be 590 degrees. Change and select it and you'll see it dropping down to the new temperature. Want it to be 650? Just hold enter again, change the temperature to the desired number and press enter to select. It's super simple. Now we're going to make the most common mistake with the adjustment mode and then I'll show you how to fix it. Now let's say you spent a lot of time just trying to adjust the temperature holding the up button. Seems right. I want to adjust the temperature like it says here. Let's set it to 750. And then you hit enter and it starts dropping back down to 650. Weird. You haven't read the manual or watched this video so you think like, what's going on? That's weird. Maybe I should try again. So when it's back at 650, you try to adjust it again, hoping it will work this time. Back to 750. Come on, let's go. I want it to go 750. And once again, it starts dropping back down to 650. When you've done that a couple of times and probably have lost count of how many degrees you've changed it back and forth, the only way to fix this is with a soldering iron thermometer and calibrate it correctly. But if you don't have one, what you do is turn it off, press and hold both the up button and enter button together and then turn it on. And then it displays the letter A. The A stands for Asia, which means the temperature will be displayed in degrees Celsius. Press up and it displays the letter U, which stands for USA. So the temperature will be displayed in degrees Fahrenheit. Just press enter to select which one you want and that's a factory reset to easily correct it. And now the temperature should be readjusted to the correct calibration. Of course, after resetting the device, all your other settings will be reset as well, so you'll have to go through the menus again to select the password, presets, etc. Now let's say you've selected the presets from the menu and want to customize them to the temperatures you use most. You can scroll through them by short pressing up, and as you can see, these pre-made ones are kind of weird numbers. Select the preset you want to adjust. As you can see, it drops down to the selected preset temperature we don't want. So to change it, just do exactly the same like when adjusting the temperature without presets. Hold the enter button and change the numbers to the desired temperature. As you can see, it stays set to the new temperature. Even when selecting different presets, it stays saved. That's all there is to it. Let's wet the cleaning sponge and start testing. First. We're going to try to solder three different gauges of wires, starting with a small wire and work our way up to a thick gauge wire. Although our solder already contains flux, we like to use a bit extra to make it flow better. As you can see, the soldering iron has no problem immediately heating it up all the way and easily got the solder in between the copper strands. The medium wire was pretty much the same. Heat it up fast and manage to evenly spread out the solder between the copper strands creating a nice and strong connection. For the thicker wire, we're going to try to use the flat part of this hoof shaped tip. Although we know this tip is too small to properly heat up a large mass like this thick wire, we're going to try anyway to see how it goes and if the soldering iron manages to maintain its temperature. As you can see, it takes some effort to get all that mass heated up enough for the solder to melt. And even then, it's not flowing that well, even when you're right above the tip. Although it managed to create a strong connection, the solder didn't flow as easily between the copper strands like it did with the previous wires, especially on the backside. The good thing is that the temperature didn't even drop once. Put a much larger hoof or chisel tip on it and it will heat up thicker wires no problem. For the last test, we're going to try to remove some small wires from this circuit board. And as you can see, it immediately softens the solder and gets the wire loose. It really is a piece of cake with this soldering station. Just get the tip in there and before you know it, it's loose. Yeah, I really like this soldering station. It's small and has a nicely designed soldering iron stand that holds both a cleaning sponge 
and metal wire. It has simple temperature controls once you get used to them. However, adjusting the many settings with those controls, combined with the limited display options of the screen, make it seem overly complicated and confusing for new users. It performs great and gives an easy-to-read temperature on the digital display with HACO quality for a great price. You can even easily upgrade it to work with nitrogen if you want to take it to the next level in the future. The design is a matter of personal taste, though. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a soldering station that's not too elaborate nor expensive, yet handles everything you throw at it and will last for years to come, then the Hanko FX 888D might be just for you. You can check it out in the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you liked our video, please consider liking and subscribing. More videos are on the way, so we'll see you on the next one.